What is going on guys? JD from New York here. WWE News and Rumors for the week ending October 27th, 2013. As we head into WWE Hell in the Cell live on pay-per-view to finally crown a new WWE Champion. It's either going to be Daniel Bryan or Randy Orton. But if you guys have been watching me for the last month, you guys know what I'm going to say before I even say it. Fuck those other guys. Fuck those other guys on YouTube. This is your number one source for WWE news, rumors, thoughts, opinion, in-depth analysis on storylines. This is your number one source for everything WWE related on YouTube. Why? Because JD is best for business. Plain and simple. Now, before I begin, guys, I am doing the Hell in the Cell review on Sunday, immediately after the pay-per-view. My video should be up by midnight, so look forward to that. I will give you my thoughts on everything that happened live at the pay-per-view. I will be watching it, as always, with my brother at the bar with a Guinness in my hand. So don't worry about that. I will definitely be bringing you the review of the pay-per-view this coming Sunday. Look out for that. But as far as this week's news, guys, I got a hoarse voice. I don't know what the fuck happened. I think it was me yelling at Black Ops 2 for the last couple of days. I lost my voice trying to get that one last live commentary before the next game comes out. But as far as WWE news, guys, there was a lot of news this week, but there wasn't one big story that is most important over everything else. So I'm just going to give you the news as I, uh, I kind of gathered it through the week. But let's get into it. I'm going to start off with the WWE uh, channel that they're trying to uh, unleash, the WWE Network. Now, WWE's long-planned cable network could debut as early as next year, according to sources within the sports entertainment organization. One source specifically states that a target date is set for February 24th, 2014, which is the day after the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event. While the date has yet to be confirmed by a second source. People in the WWE are working under the assumption that the WWE Network will be launched within the first quarter of 2014. Now, there was an update. As soon as I found this out, there was an update on only a couple days ago. Issued by the WWE, they released the following statement regarding the start date for the WWE Network. As discussed on WWE's last earnings call, we continue to aggressively pursue the launch of a WWE network in 2014 via traditional and non-traditional distribution models. However, no launch date has been confirmed. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about the WWE network. I think, me personally, it's a great idea. Because if the way they structure it, you know, all the pay-per-views except for WrestleMania will be on the WWE network. Monday Night Raw may move to, to, to their network, SmackDown, you'll have NXT finally in the States. WWE can showcase a lot of talent on the WWE Network. They can showcase a lot of their programming on WWE Network. And most importantly, I know you guys are all nostalgia freaks just like I am. You love watching the days of old, the glory days. The WWE encyclopedia and catalog is so is so full that they have God knows how much footage and film that they can actually fill programming with. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Imagine watching old school matches and highlights. I'd be I'd be on WWE Network all day long. There's no reason for me to watch anything else. Really. I mean, I'm sure that you guys think the same way. I would love a WWE Network. I can't wait till it gets up off the ground. And it's going to be a great thing if WWE manages the right way. And, uh, you know, especially with the pay-per-view calendar, all their pay-per-views, imagine paying one set price for WWE Network, and you get all the pay-per-views throughout the year. You don't have to go nowhere. You can watch it in the comfort of your own home. You don't got to go to the bar. You don't gotta sp you're going to spend $60 per pay-per-view. It's a great thing that they're doing, and hopefully they do get it off the ground. I'm very excited for it. I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I'm definitely going to be subscribing to the WWE Network. Now, there's a story leaked earlier this week that uh, I was kind of shocked by. And uh, WWE releasing Jesse White. Now, Jesse White is actually um, Jake Carter in NXT. 
Okay, he was the son of WWE legend Vader. Okay, they released him from his developmental contract in NXT. He was working down there. Word from NXT is that White had no good creative ideas for himself, which led to heat with creative. A lot of the NXT talents are expected to come up with their own character and ideas and pitch them to the creative team. The NXT writers did not like any of White's ideas, and that put him on the bubble. What sealed White's fate with the company was on a September 12th episode of NXT in a dark match against Tensai, officials thought the match was awful. Between the heat from creative and then the bad match with Tensai, the decision was made to finally release him. White was actually released just days after the match with Tensai on NXT. Now, I'm not too familiar with uh, Jesse White's in-ring work. I wasn't familiar with Jake Carter, his character in NXT. Uh, I know he is the son of Vader, but... Listen, if you're not cutting it in the ring, if you got no real concrete ideas for your character, I know the WWE is very strict on that kind of thing. They want something done. They want to feature the most up-and-coming talent on NXT. You know, he pretty much sealed his own fate. And, you know, the WWE just did what any business would do. You got you to gotta weed out the weak. So, I mean, that's all I know about this story. I figured you guys should know about that story as well. You know, obviously it involved Vader. Vader was one of the all-time greats. His son was trying to get into uh, WWE and make it to the main roster, um, and they just let him go. So that's the reason why they let uh, Vader's son, uh, Jesse White, go. They released him from his contract. A source has confirmed that the recent rumors, now there were recent rumors that Ric Flair just finished up a stint at WWE-sponsored rehab. Flair was there for one month. Both WWE and Flair had been trying to keep things very quiet with the public, uh, with Flair himself lying to friends and family about his whereabouts, telling most of his friends and family that he had been with his daughter in Florida. Flair did not want to go into rehab, but it was the idea of Triple H, and Triple H actually talked him into getting rehab. As I've previously reported here, um, Triple H actually kind of developed a new position just specifically for Ric Flair, but heat from SummerSlam weekend with that whole thing that got Jim Ross fired... Uh, it, you know, it kind of led Triple H to the decision that, listen, you know, Ric Flair needs to go into WWE rehab. Flair going into rehab only helped his chances in working for the WWE again. And then the sources also say uh, that, um, you know, the people close to Ric Flair say that there was a concern of endorsement opportunities taking a hit if anything about his stint in rehab went public. Um, so I'm glad that Ric Flair actually got rehab. Um, for whatever demons he's trying to overcome. I don't know what demons, uh, you know, he was trying to overcome. Maybe it was alcohol, drugs. I don't know. I know Ric Flair has been through a lot with the death of his son. Uh, he's got his daughter down at NXT who's trying to make it to the main roster. Uh, he was, you know, he just left uh, TNA. He definitely wants to work the remainder of his career with WWE. Uh, I know Triple H has this position in mind that where all the top NXT talents get together and they sit down with Ric Flair and kind of pick his brain about how to work a big match, and he trains them on how to work a big match and cut a big-time promo. That's the kind of position that Triple H has in mind for Ric Flair. You know, getting him to work with the young guys and get them to that main event level, that main event mindset to, uh, you know, work that big match, cut that big match promo, get the intensity down, and, you know, the whole the whole feel of, the, of working that big match you know, title match or WrestleMania match or pay-per-view match or whatever. And Ric Flair is the number one guy for that. Nobody has any more experience than Ric Flair when it comes to that. So I wish Ric Flair good luck. I hope his stint in rehab was great. He gets back on the right track. And we see him on WWE TV again, working with the young talent in NXT, bringing those rookies up to the main roster and getting them ready for the big time. Triple H also with NXT. News about him in NXT. Triple H is actually looking to sign at least 30 more developmental talents over the next two months. WWE officials are working on setting up tryouts in November and December in hopes of reaching their target. The hopes is that they can get the Performance Center in Orlando closer to capacity. Now, Triple H put out the word to focus particularly on finding bigger guys at the, up uh, at the upcoming tryouts. With the WWE Network launch still not confirmed, and the planned Cruiserweight show in limbo for the WWE Network, Triple H feels that the WWE has enough smaller guys signed for now and feels that it's time for some bigger guys to be signed. Now, I don't necessarily like 
the whole Vince McMahon idea about going out and finding the biggest muscle head, the biggest steroid head, and uh, you know putting him on TV with absolutely no wrestling skill uh, because he's got the just the look of a top guy, the look of a main eventer. That's not the way you run business. That's the way Vince ran his business. You know, he loved guys with the physique of Mason Ryan and Batista and guys along those lines, guys that were cut like that, you know. Me, on the other hand, me personally, I like guys who are like Daniel Bryan. I like guys who are like CM Punk, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose. You can eventually throw a Roman Reigns type guy in there, you know, but, you know, big but not too big. You know, Batista was, Batista was great. You know, I loved his heel work. Right as he left the WWE, he feuded with John Cena. They, you know, he, he he retired, he quit, whatever. His his work as a heel was fantastic. And he wasn't that bad in the ring either. You know, but it all boils down to who is best in the ring, who's got the look, and who's got that it factor, that mic skill. It, you know, it, 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 there's so many factors to it to get on WWE TV that it, it's just so difficult nowadays for these guys. I, I can't imagine what they go through, what, 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 you know, the struggle that they have to put themselves through just to get on TV and maintain that spot because you take one step back and there's one guy ready to take your spot over jumping you on the ladder. You know, it's not easy. You know, I've always wondered what it, you know, what it would be like to be in the wrestling business to see how things are really run. I'm just on here giving you my opinion on things. But Triple H wants 30 guys signed, 30 big guys, you know. I don't necessarily agree with that. I like Daniel Bryan's and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose's and you know, even Bray Wyatt's. Bray Wyatt's not the biggest guy, but he's he's got the look of a wrestler, you know. I don't want some muscle-bound steroid head coming in just because he looks like a main eventer. Meanwhile, he's got no wrestling skill. That's not the way I would run biz- run business. But Triple H, I have faith in Triple H to get these guys groomed. And only Triple H knows when they're going to be ready for the main roster. And obviously, you're going to need a good character to go along with that too. You know, you need a mixture of everything. Triple H knows what he's doing. I have faith in him. Listen to this. You guys are wondering what The Undertaker is going to be doing. You got rumors of Sting, and you got rumors of The Rock, and and all these fucking matches people are throwing at me for WrestleMania. I'm going to put one to rest right now. Okay, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, that's Dave Meltzer, the number one in the business, The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar is now penciled in for WrestleMania 30, provided that The Undertaker feels healthy enough to work that kind of match, that stiff match with Brock Lesnar. Lesnar was always going to work with either The Undertaker or The Rock. So there you got it. One match for for, uh, WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans. The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. It should be a fucking classic. Undertaker always puts on a great match. This match has been brewing for the last three years. People have been wanting to see this match. You you got the intensity of Brock Lesnar versus the fucking streak. It's going to be believable. It's going to be epic. Can Lesnar overcome the streak? Of course not. But if there's one man to make it believable and continue those strings of great fucking matches with The Undertaker, it's Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's been back, and he looks phenomenal. He hasn't had one bad match since he's been back. I look forward to it. It's going to be an epic match at WrestleMania if it's still penciled in by the time Royal Rumble comes around, which, you know, WWE doesn't tend to fuck around with The Undertaker. They usually have something set in mind, and then they go with it. You know, this is The Undertaker and WrestleMania. You you really can't fuck with that. So if they got Lesnar in mind, you know it's pretty much set. Ryback is scheduled to feud with Big E Langston after the current feud with CM Punk. Figured I'd throw that out there. That should be an interesting match. You know, Big E, you know, working with Ryback and Paul Heyman. That may get Big E over just a little bit more. We'll see what happens. I tend to not like... You know, two guys of similar stature working a match like that, Ryback and Big E. But, you know, I'm interested to see where Big E goes with this new face turn, you know. We'll see what happens, but Ryback is scheduled to feud with Big E after this feud with CM Punk. Vince McMahon returning to WWE TV. When is the boss coming back to WWE TV? Well, it's been reported that Vince is actually scheduled to return to WWE TV imminently, is what they said. The reports are saying imminently. It said that they have a concrete plan in place for Vince to return, but there is not a plan in place to where they want to go after that. I don't want to hear shit like that. You got to have a plan for him to return to TV, and you got to have a plan for him going forward. What is he doing? Why is he back on TV? That's where WWE Creative fucks up. They got a plan for him to come back, but 
what's going to happen after that? Why is he back? What is he going to do? That's the most important part. You can bring anyone back on TV. You can put me on fucking TV. What am I going to do? This is the boss. You got to have a plan for what you want to do with Vince McMahon after he comes back. Okay? Big E Langston was also praised by Vince McMahon after this week's Monday Night Raw and the tag team match with CM Punk. His stock reportedly took a huge bump after Monday night. Word is that Vince sees that it factor in Big E Langston and that it factor is lacking in many other top WWE superstars, according to Vince. Vince and others have been high on Big E for some time, but he gained even more support this week, and it doesn't, it doesn't hurt Big E's chances when you got John Cena, the face of the company, actually backing you as well and training you and, you, and he's got the full support of John Cena. So things are looking good for Big E. You know, it's exciting to be Big E. He's got the backing of the boss, he's got the backing of creative, and he's got the backing of John Cena. You know, he's, uh, he's set for uh, a nice big push. But can he handle it? Will the fans back him? It's something that we have to wait and see. Big Show. Big Show. When is Big Show coming back to WWE TV? These rogue appearances by the Big Show that we've seen on Monday Night Raw. He comes into the crowd, he does his damage, and then leaves. Okay? He's not, according to WWE sources and storylines, he doesn't have a contract anymore. He's fired. But the Big Show's rogue appearances on Monday Night Raw are likely going to be part of Vince McMahon's return to the storylines on WWE TV. Vince is expected to return before the Survivor Series pay-per-view, and on a related note, the Raw General Manager, Brad Maddox, may be kept off TV for another week or two to sell the knockout punch from the big show that he took on SmackDown, which looked pretty vicious in the replay, uh, but I didn't watch SmackDown. All, all I seen was the highlights on Monday Night Raw. So, big show coming back. It's going to be part of the whole Vince McMahon storyline. Vince may actually hire big show back, uh, and uh, I don't know where they go from there, but uh, I do have news on Survivor Series and what WWE is kind of planning right now. Uh, they switched their their feeling towards the Survivor Series pay-per-view, uh, booking different kind of matches. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I have it all here on News and Rumors. There is plan for Bray Wyatt to, quote-unquote, destroy The Miz, leading for Kane to return to WWE TV and avenge his destruction. Kofi Kingston may fit into those plans as well. I'm all for it. Bray Wyatt destroying The Miz. The Miz is just garbage right now. He's got absolutely no direction. So it's going to be nice to see Bray Wyatt destroy The Miz. Kane is going to come back, try and avenge his loss to Bray Wyatt. I really don't want to see Kane work with Bray Wyatt anymore. There were rumors about Kane coming back and being a part of the Wyatt family, being under like a, a hypnotized spell of Bray Wyatt, being one of the followers. I don't know. I, I really don't know what they're doing with Kane, but I really don't want to see Kane versus Bray Wyatt again. I just don't. The one match was enough that we got at SummerSlam. That Inferno match was fucking awful. It was absolutely awful. Kane is not the right guy to work with Bray Wyatt. And I mentioned this weeks back when Bray Wyatt fought Kofi Kingston on Monday Night Raw. Okay? Kofi Kingston is the kind of guy Bray Wyatt needs to work with. Okay? Not Kane. Kane is sluggish in the ring. He's, he's, he fumbles around. He's not, he's not the most smooth guy in the ring. He's got a great character. He's got a great history. He's a Hall of Famer. We know this. But Kane is old, okay? Kane is not the guy, you know, to wrestle Bray Wyatt, you know, as, as you're trying to build up Bray Wyatt's character and get him known to the WWE audience. He's just not that guy. Kofi Kingston could be that guy. They had a great match on Monday Night Raw uh, a couple of months back, and it was, it was pleasant to see. It really was. And I, I only hope the best for Bray Wyatt because, honestly, to me, and I'm sure most of you, Definitely got one of the most engaging characters on WWE TV. He makes you want to watch him. He's great on the mic. He knows what he's doing in the ring. And he's just got that character where you want to see what he's going to do next. You know? Bray Wyatt is going to be a major superstar, major player in the WWE. And uh, I'm all for it. Destroying The Miz. Hopefully he destroys Kane again. And we'll see. May who knows? Maybe, he'd be, maybe he'll be in a world title picture by the end of the year. I don't know. But Bray Wyatt is going to be destroying The Miz according to WWE storylines which is going to lead to Kane's return on WWE TV. CM Punk recently met with Vince McMahon and the WWE creative team about his next program, and Punk has enjoyed his feud with Paul Heyman, but is said to be eagerly awaiting what's next. What's next for CM Punk? Well, this is my prediction. Punk is going to win the Royal Rumble. Daniel Bryan is going to be the WWE champion as we go into the Royal Rumble leading into WrestleMania, and CM Punk is going to be fighting Daniel Bryan 
at WrestleMania 30. It makes sense. It's something that would be absolutely off the fucking wall. Unbelievable and epic. Can you imagine Daniel Bryan and CM Punk at WrestleMania 30 for the WWE Championship? Can you just imagine that? Two guys who work their fucking asses off you know, idolizing the WWE and the superstars and you know how the way they got into the business and it's just it's just, it's unbelievable story that they can tell unbelievable story that those two can tell leading into WrestleMania it would be fantastic hopefully that's what happens that's my prediction for that Punk Brian WWE Championship WrestleMania 30 that's my prediction on that so I think that's what CM Punk is eagerly awaiting to have happen he wants to get to work on that it's gonna be great. It's been reported that the Big Show versus Triple H. Now, you guys have uh, commented this in my Monday Night Raw review. If you missed that, link is down below. Big Show versus Triple H was in the works for WWE Survivor Series uh, in November. But word came out at this week's TV tapings that WWE officials may be looking to do the Daniel Bryan versus Triple H match at Survivor Series. If the match does happen at Survivor Series, it will likely go on after that. No word yet on what would happen to the Big Show versus Triple H. That was originally ideated. Okay? Now, I want you guys to think about this for one second. I want you to think about and listen to what I got to say. If Daniel Bryan versus Triple H happens at Survivor Series in place of Big Show versus Triple H, honestly, I'm not joking around. You know, I'm not being sarcastic or anything. That is honestly best for business. Okay? Daniel Bryan versus Triple H will sell the Survivor Series pay-per-view alone. Okay, that would be a great match. Triple H can obviously still go in the ring, you know, and he would he would tell a great story with Daniel Bryan. Now, this is what I really want you to think about. If the match does happen and the WWE creative does lead the road down, you know, on Survivor Series with this match, will Daniel Bryan be the WWE champion? Is the WWE champion going to be fighting the COO of the company at Survivor Series? You know, because if you're WWE champion, your obligation is to defend the WWE championship at every pay-per-view, okay? Now, everybody's been saying HBK is going to turn heel at Hell in a Cell. He's going to screw Daniel Bryan. He's going to line himself with Triple H. I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. It doesn't make sense, and it really isn't best for business if you're going to have HBK turn on Daniel Bryan. How much more can Daniel Bryan take in this storyline, in this angle? He's been buried enough by words of Triple H, you know? He's been buried enough by Randy Orton on the receiving end of most attacks, leaving, uh, leaving Daniel Bryan just laid to waste on every Monday Night Raw. Daniel Bryan maybe got two or three shows tops where he was standing tall on the end, you know? And he stood tall on Monday Night Raw leading into the pay-per-view, which means nothing. It means nothing. But realistically, if Daniel Bryan does beat Randy Orton at Hell in a Cell and is the WWE Champion, is he going to be the WWE Champion and fight Triple H at Survivor Series? Like, where does that work? It, it makes you think, because why would they give Daniel Bryan the WWE Championship if they want him to fight Triple H? That, that part doesn't make sense to me. Unless they're not going to defend the title at, at Survivor Series. I don't know. But I don't see why WWE would not defend the title. I don't know. This, this, this is all ideas right now. This is all speculation. I don't know. It's something to think about. You know? If they're planning this, who, who's to say they don't give Randy Orton the title again? You know? Maybe they do turn HBK heel. I don't know. It's all, th it's all stuff that you really got to think about. And I'm not really making a bold prediction for the pay-per-view. I just don't see it being best for business if HBK screws Daniel Bryan. It doesn't. Because how, how are you going to transition yourself into... HBK versus Triple H if it does happen at WrestleMania. How does how's that going to work? You know, I don't I don't it's just a lot of headache and a lot of, you know, going around in circles and trying to, you know, do this and do that and it's it's the it's the tougher road. It's not the easy road. Something like Triple H versus HBK, it needs the easy road. It's obvious. You know, you don't need to do too much work to make that match happen. And here I am just rambling, but it's something you guys got to think about. I'm trying to throw out all the possibilities, all the possible you know, situations that could possibly happen at Hell in a Cell, but right now, that's what's being reported. Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Obviously, it's better than Big Show versus Triple H. I don't want to see that match. I don't want to see that match ever. Daniel Bryan versus Triple H will sell the Survivor Series if it does happen, but will Daniel Bryan be the WWE Champion? Think about it. 
Regarding why Dolph Ziggler seems to be stuck in the mid-card right now, he has the reputation backstage for being someone with a bad attitude. It's said that WWE officials don't like the way he represents himself backstage, the way he speaks to people, and the way he speaks to the media. While Ziggler tries to make it sound like he's keeping up with the storylines, there are people within WWE that don't like how he speaks out about the company. So there you have it. That's the, why, uh, that's the reason why Dolph Ziggler is stuck in the mid-card and uh, not fighting for that World Heavyweight Championship like he should be. I don't understand it. You know, I figured Ziggler would be a little bit more brighter than that, a little bit more smarter than that. Don't speak out against WWE because when they find out something, you're in the fucking doghouse and you're in the doghouse for a very long time. You know, keep your mouth shut, do your work, go to work, you know, go to sleep, do it all over again the next day. Just work your ass off, get to the top spot, and just fucking listen to what they got to tell you. That's all. That's the way the business is run. I know it. I've seen it happen. I've heard stories. I've read stories all through the dirt sheets, all, you know, throughout all the years, I know. And Ziggler is, uh, is making a big mistake. Just keep his mouth shut, and hopefully he gets out of the doghouse, and WWE sees the fucking talent they have in Ziggler. He should be in the main event right now. He, should, he can carry a main event program. He's got the mic skills, he's got the look, he's got the wrestling ability, he's got, uh, you know, unbelievable work ethic. We see it every week, you know? He, he deserves to be in the WWE Championship picture or the World Heavyweight Championship picture. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. There is constant praise for Triple H making changes to the WWE, but there is talk within the company that he may be trying to take over too much too soon. There is a feeling that he may be overworked right now. That's... The same with Vince. He's following the Vince McMahon formula. Constantly working, not taking a break, and thinking about uh, everything a little bit too much. Take a step back. Realize what you're doing. You don't need to work yourself too hard. Things sometimes can get themselves done on their own. You don't really need to have hands-on on everything. That's why you hire people. That's why you have your wife. Stephanie can handle some of the workload. You don't need to be doing it all yourself. It's the same thing I hear about Vince McMahon. He works himself to death. He's out of touch, he's fucking overexhausted, he's tired, he's grumpy, this and that. I don't want to see Triple H go down that same route because that's what fucks up Vince McMahon and his ideas and his thinking about certain things. You need Triple H healthy, you need Triple H rested, and you need him with a solid concrete direction with the company, where he wants to take the company. You don't want, you don't want him overworked. You don't want him taking uh, too much too soon. So uh, hopefully uh, things turn around for Triple H uh, with that. Um, also with Triple H... He has been getting a lot of heat um, in the locker room with the guys. Uh, uh, at the conclusion of Monday Night Raw, Triple H took the mic and ran Daniel Bryan down yet again. Just like I mentioned before, Daniel Bryan's been taking the brunt and, and most of all the ridicule by Triple H and the corporation, whether they're just laying him out, whether it's by words that Triple H and Stephanie say. But Triple H took the mic and ran down Daniel Bryan yet again, saying Bryan was not worthy of being the face of the WWE. Triple H's scripted remarks had a lot of people shaking their heads backstage since they feel he was burying him as a performer rather than knock him in a way that would lead to Brian gaining retribution. I don't like that. Brian doesn't really need to be talked to like that, whether it's scripted, whether it's real. I don't care. You know, the fans may be, may be too stupid to see it, but it's reported. And people like you and me and the smart people see it. You don't bury Daniel Bryan like that. You know, Daniel Bryan is going to be the face of the company regardless. He's going to be the WWE champion. They're not doing all this for nothing. He's going to get the title. But you don't fucking bury him by saying that he's not worth it. He's not worthy of being the face of the WWE. Of course he is. Just by the fucking crowd reaction he gets, he's worthy of being face of the WWE. You kidding me? Unbelievable. He gets he gets the crowd reaction and he never gets tired seeing people chant yes, yes, yes in the crowd. It's fucking exciting. He is going to be the face of the WWE, regardless of what Triple H says, regardless of what Stephanie says, or regardless of whatever anybody feels. He's going to be the face of the WWE. You know, accept it. The originally scheduled main event for Monday Night Raw in Memphis uh, was um, was supposed to be Cody Rhodes and Goldust versus The Shield in a handicap match. Vince McMahon, however, changed the creative plans over the course of the day as a triple threat match for the WWE Tag Team Championships was announced for Hell in a Cell instead. Cody Rhodes and Goldust will defend their belts against the Shield and the Uso brothers. And the United States champion Dean Ambrose versus Daniel Bryan was added to Monday Night Raw at the last minute. Speaking of Ambrose, he appeared to have tweaked his knee after being tossed out of the ring during his show opening match against Daniel Bryan, which was a great fucking match. Um, and he was limping slightly backstage following the match. But his injury is not considered serious. Now finally guys, in a tag team match pitting Hell in the Cell opponents, 
CM Punk and Biggie Langston defeated the Intercontinental Champion Curtis Axel and Ryback on Raw. Following the bout, there was a lot of talk backstage about CM Punk once again appearing hurt. So, uh, I don't know. Punk, we all know Punk is hurt. We all know Punk has uh, got a lot of nagging injuries, but he just appears to be working through it. I don't see it on TV, but apparently the, the news articles and the dirt sheets say that he's hurt. Who knows? But, but he's hurt, but he's getting into a hell in the cell with Ryback on Sunday. So, believe what you want. That's news and rumors, guys. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. Hell in the Cell is on Sunday. I will have my full review, thoughts, and analysis on everything regarding the pay-per-view on Sunday, immediately immediately following the pay-per-view. So if you guys enjoyed this commentary, this uh, week in review, news and rumors, obviously subscribe, like, favorite, share, comment, let me know your thoughts down below on everything this week. I'm out, guys. I will talk to you all on Sunday for WWE Hell in a Cell 2013. I'll talk to you guys later.